Welcome to the Rip Comic Podcast here on the Voucher Head Network. It is very cold like it was last time, and uh, I want to thank my, my brothers and Carlos, who mysteriously uh, disappeared this past couple of days. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into the first of the minute news. I mean, literally, if you if you were to type Spawn Universe, it is all over the internet. I mean, we, we got it in the New York Times, we got it in IGN, we got it in Yahoo Entertainment, we got it in Bleeding uh, Cool News, we got it in uh, sci-fi.com, we got it, I mean, you name it, this story has hit like literally everywhere across the internet. Uh, I mean, this is a huge thing. Uh, Spawn, for the longest time, has, uh, you know, had been just that one book and then maybe it would have a, a couple of off- offshoot uh, uh, you know stories and stuff and so the headline you know uh, Spawn Comics to expand this summer with three new series uh, Todd McFarlane is introducing new characters with an eye on Bill see now that's kind of a deceptive title now these new characters are they you know what I mean maybe there are other characters involved in their universes but I mean we all kind of know these characters because he's been featuring them in these uh, spawn issues so the three monthly comics that have been announced and uh, right here uh, first up is in June spawns universe it's a standalone uh, issue that will set the stage for the three monthly books there's going to be king spawn gunslinger spawn and then a team book called The Scorched. And in The Scorched, he has featured, um, he had Gunslinger in there, um, Medieval Spawn, that uh, the, the I don't know her name. It's the, the new, the, the female character that he has running around. And then there was another character. Oh, the Redeemer. But, but Spawn has been doing quite successful uh, these, these uh, past, uh, past couple of months. They, they've, been, they've been selling quite a bit. Uh, with the help of this new team that uh, that that the 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 this this series that he's been going uh, of story that he that he has been uh, having, uh, he's work uh, he's working with several writers. Um, it says Brett Booth, Donnie Cates, Jim mm-hmm. Chung, Greg Capullo, Frank Quietly are the names that they have mentioned as of right now. Um, Spawn number one came out in 1992 he has never released anything else with a number one according to what he had said but but you know there's uh angela there's violator book there's you know there's been some other offshoot books that we've seen even where spawn kills you know whatever i think he i I forgot what that series was called he kills everybody kills everyone everybody yeah yeah. yeah and so yeah there's been some opportunities to leap in but as as we know um you know, but as far as actual spawn books, he's going to make it an opportunity, you know, for everybody to jump in on one of these books, or if not all these books, for everybody to go ahead and, um, you know, to do all that kind of thing and, and, and stuff like that. But um, so that's what that's what's happening in the spawn uh, universe and stuff like that. So what do you guys uh, feel about uh, this? Richard had has been collecting spawn you know for for quite a long time what what are your thoughts on spawn universe and three new titles coming to the fray well i think he's he's trying to target the spawn uh well i guess the people buying spawn um i mean they do have a lot of different books and image um and i mean i don't know he I kind of read into this whenever they were posting pictures of of the shirt. Somebody had a shirt on that said Spawn and it had Venom on the shirt, a picture of Venom as opposed to Spawn. Um, I mean, it's a good it's a good fit for most of these writers and and so forth. Uh, Capullo has been doing Spawn on and off for quite a few years since it first kind of came out. Um, 
you're looking at Donny Cates, who has been working on uh, one of the other characters that, that you know, that that McFarlane had create co-created, which is Venom. And um, I mean, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see the way it takes off. Um, I know some of those Spawn spinoffs aren't necessarily high on my my list, but others do seem, you know, like they're going to be pretty cool. Uh, so Roland, is, she, what, is she part of Alpha Flight? Yeah, th- this is a character. That, yeah, they've 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 had her on for a while. Um, her <clears> first <throat> appearance, I think, was uh, maybe about five six issues ago. I don't I don't recall the number, but. It was also a special cover that came out, and then they 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 had her on a, like two issues, like two other covers were printed and then were thrown out there, and then they quickly sold out. But she's been actually kind of uh, featured in this this uh, current storyline, uh, and they got her on the cover. Obviously, if it is Spawn Universe, this is just the sneak preview, and of course, you're going to have a high caliber artist such as uh, uh, Campbell, uh, you know, be the promo item. So if it's a team book and you're featuring three other characters, it's safe to assume you're going to see three other covers or more like the team book. And then you're going to see King Spawn. You know what I mean? Kind of featuring your Spawn <clears throat> universe characters. So, cover you know what I mean? Character and then yeah. one team, team group and then cover. the black and white ones. And then the, the sketch one, the and web then one, the gold one, and then the foil one. And, and then, then the Chadwick Boseman. So and then, yeah. okay. So the, artist, the, the clear artist one. He he found a way where he could basically, you know, if he if he, you know, at the end of the month, that's when his book would come out, and then he would clean up. You know what I mean? He was like featuring covers, covers, mm-hmm. covers, and then, oh, here's the magical cover, and then, boom, they sell you know a hundred thousand copies or seventy five thousand copies or whatever the number may be. So now he's got a way where, you know, he's going to do this weekly. He's going to make, oh, wow, we could just average. And this is what they're doing. They're averaging if, if these are the popular characters because that's all that was. That was a litmus test. The litmus test was, okay, I need a, 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 some kind of let's, let's test the waters and find out. Of course, you know, everybody goes crazy for the gunslinger. So that's already going to be a, a key book. And obviously everybody likes this Frank Frazetta kind of, uh, you know, uh, medieval looking stuff and if he makes the book like that you know that's already you know he's gonna have a a built-in audience that likes the conan big axes creatures and all that i mean he's got that and then you have a team book you you can mix that team up with various you know what i mean it's like having the x-men one minute you can have this character featured or this character and and then the big crossover event um what, what I'm seeing, what I'm thinking, the first thought that came to mind from seeing Spawn's universe, he's going to create his own Marvel or DC within Spawn. And it's not even like, I thought Image kind of tried doing that in the beginning because it was, they were all interconnected. I mean, you look at the first year or two and how many times did each other show up, you know, like Savage Dragon, Bedrock shows up, you know, and all these, you know. <laughs> in a whole issue and he's just fighting each other. And he's, he's hoping that all those little, those little one shots and cover uh, teases of, of gunslinger and medieval um, are, are going to work out for him. And I I don't know if people are going to stick with it because it's almost like, I mean, it's not really like creating new characters. It's, yeah, no, I, I, I know, I, I know. Uh, let me, let me bring uh, Carlos into this. Carlos, are, are you, uh, have you, have you ever bought a Spawn book? He's the, he's the, he's the, he's the, he's the new generation. We're, we're, we're dudes from like the, when this book came out in the nineties, man, ninety two. Out of three hundred and fourteen books, have you ever purchased a Spawn book? No, I've have never purchased ever, a Spawn book have or ever, any like Spawn have you ever like seen, merchandise. Yeah, have you ever seen a Spawn book that you were like? drawn to or do you even know what have you ever seen the spawn movie or yeah, the movie series yeah the movie or the anime no oh wow okay i've seen them in mortal combat though <laughs> i think oh, it was there, in mortal Kombat. there you go well well there you go you know you know one thing i'll tell you this 
of all the things that you could sneak in a movie, do you think that they would sneak a, a cameo of Spawn in that thing? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, but uh, Spawn, Spawn came out in Soul Calibur. Right. True. Sure. No, but I'm but I'm talking. About, okay, but okay. So we're we're hearing from somebody that uh, is is the like the 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 future generation, and I'm trying to think of this, guys. What would Spawn be for? Like the way the way it is for uh, for Carlos. What is a character that was 30 years? Oh no, I'm never mind. I'm not going to go there because the word's going to be the word's going to be Speed Racer. <laughs> <gasps> That's what no. the equivalent of this is no, because so in your world, yeah. well, but Speed Racer, I mean, come on. But realistically, come on, the, it never it never struck. Nobody was like, oh, you know that what you didn't see Speed Racer madness anywhere. It was very cultish. <gasps> you know, I'm trying to think of something. Could you guys think of something that was 30 years removed that w- when we were in the books that we're like, you can't oh. Say- but you can't say that because in the 90s, 30 years before was Avengers, Spider-Man. <laughs> Which have re- resurged. They had a resurgence somewhere later on because they were see, handled funny, properly. But, well, McFarlane, but see, that's McFarlane thing. released Spider-Man number one, two, three. I mean, they relaunched it with, with his artistry. Right. So, okay, well, let me ask you this, Carlos. Does this, if somebody was to say, hey, this is the ground level, just like Future State, this is this would be right here, the number one book that would start you off to three brand new books. They're not 300 books into it. These are brand new books of, a, of three different characters. Does this and, interest you at all? We will get more into well, it when, when and, he and, gets more information. And, but, but, and again, for our audio listeners... This is Spawn's universe number one with a uh, a Spawn by Campbell artistic drawing. Yeah, yeah. Um, with guns that would make Rob Liefeld very happy. happy. <laughs> you know, I bet you he feels so jealous right now. Anyway, she's got Cable's guns. No, he has Spawn's guns. Remember the toy? Yeah, but who had him first? Cable, yeah, big cable guns, thing. big guns, and think, broken chains. But they look, but they look straight. They don't look curved. <laughs> but, well, okay, back so to anyway, back Carlos. To Carlos. Does this back to Carlos? Would this, would this interest you at all? If it, it's a number one issue, does this interest you at all? Would you be interested in in seeing what this book was about? If you saw this on the shelf, I'll be intrigued by it. If I if I were to like come across it, like if, let's just say if I just walk into a store and and just see it, I'll be intrigued by it. By the are you are you intrigued or tantalized? Intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we'll do is we got a spiked garter. Yeah. So thing a little. Yeah. I mean, she's wearing the spawn. You like the somehow Team they made spawn it uniform. Bikini. Yeah, but I mean, if you're Spawn, shouldn't you? Oh, that's a scorched. I was gonna say, shouldn't you be like burned? But I guess that's the scorched, right? Hell's so, angels. So, so what we'll do is this: this is supposed to come out in June, so that means uh, the April edition will actually have this solicited in there. So then, that's the that's the preview to pick up because those are panels are going to be first appearances of everybody. Yep. And they're going to sell for thousands of dollars later down you the line. You notice you're seeing that, right? You're seeing how crazy that these, the, mm-hmm. these, past, and- yeah, all this crap that because it appeared on the cover of previews, the previews goes for like $800, $900. Uh, yeah, the wizards, yeah, the wizards are going for it's crazy. It's like, it's like anything, you know. And the thing is, like, remember comic shop news? Those things are going for some. Those were freebies that they would give away. These newspaper things, and and now those go for you know a hundred hundred fifty dollars because it had the first appearance of of. Do you know? Do you know how much there? There's a there's a small fanzine of the crow that was only released at uh, movie theaters and corporate. So you know limited. So you know? limited. And it had you remember us getting? You remember us getting airs. mad at people for grabbing like ten or twelve of them? We we're like, hey, yeah. somehow we Quarters. didn't work there. We. <laughs> we, yeah. 
we took oh lord we, we took over that theater for a little bit so there we are spawns universe just got announced todd mcfarland has a little video if you guys have an opportunity it's on instagram and it's on his it's on his instagram it's um uh, it's about seven eight minutes long and he basically rifles through all the 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 people that are going to be contributing in this thing i mean we're talking about some major writers and people that he's worked with in the past and uh so it's a uh, it's <laughs> We're not coming in with like nobodies. We're actually coming in with people that have been well established in the comic book industry as writers, uh, inkers, artists, uh, uh, cover does, does artists. It, yeah. Does it remind you of when Image started? Everybody was a major hitter from other companies. You know, and I, you know what? I'm going to say this goes back to that, and it's almost like a do-over when they when the idea came out there was this maybe this this idea that all these guys can crisscross and we saw a little bit of that happen and i think maybe savage dragon had more crisscross with spawn than any of the other ones because we did see shadowhawk there was a little thing there and um there might have been some other things that that had the had the you know the crossover kind of stuff happening but i don't think it was really it never really turned out to be anything you know what i mean you never really saw any of these books you, they they did what Rob Liefeld did. Rob Liefeld created one book and then he made his whole universe around there. Wildcats did, you know, uh, Jim Lee would have these other books. It was Gen their 13. own, yeah, yeah. They had their own little Wild universes. Storm. Their their own little imprints was Wildstorm. Um, it used to be Homage, then it became Wildstorm. Right. Um, and honestly, Eric Larson was like Savage Dragon. Yep. You know, and and he stayed true to. To that, um, Top Cow was uh, the Silvestri yep. um, world. And the only thing that Spawn would do was it stayed within its one storyline, and then it would have like, oh, one here, off, so. yeah, here's a three-story arc of Angela. I'm not, I'm not fully Bones. caught up on Bones Spawn, and, Spawn, but Spawn isn't Al Simmons anymore, right? No. I think Al Simmons had died somewhere within the first – but now he's back. It's the original had, spawn. Came, right. Well, not original, but Al Simmons came back because that other guy's like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "I'm getting my peoples on one eight hundred and Crenshaw picking up bigger yeah. shit." Um, kind of like in Savage Dragon, but it's like an alternate universe's Savage Dragon. Yeah, all when, with the short. So, so like into the Spawnverse. Yeah. The new well, spawn is going to be kilometer there. Vasquez. He has, he's always left money for these past 300 years. He's left money on the table. He never, years. he was so for, for what? Issues. For, 300 many, issues for, many, year. for many years. He said 300 years. <laughs> oh, 300 issues. He's left money on the table. He could have done this a long time ago. I know his goal. Let's get 300. Let's get 301. Let's get the record in the book. But he's left all that there, and the and the thing was that you know he's probably had offers. He's probably had you know people asking for this. You know, let's expand on this, and you know, it it never presented itself. And you remember when we started seeing all this stuff coming around? It's like, wait a minute, why is he showing off this character? But then it, it doesn't appear in anything until a couple of issues later, and then he launches Ninja Spawn, but he doesn't appear until several issues later. The idea was there. He already knew what he wanted to do. So now, now those books that people were like, eh, I don't want those books. Guess what? Those are the books that people are going to like go looking for because now those are the first appearances of all these characters or second or third, whatever it is. These are the so, first cover appearances and stuff. He's so been laying the groundwork. So he was pulling Donnie Cates. Pretty much. See, that's the difference between what you're saying, like it trying – to do image over again image is the reason that this can be done donny cates is writing for image marvel uh capullo is drawing DC. for dc and image like well he said he's got uh he's got deals going on with the three he did say the three major companies didn't he or did he say two majors a while back when we discussed it donny cates you mean well no, no, Capullo. No, no, Capullo. You're right. 
So image. Well, what I'm saying is, is that was, you know, it, it's a lot more open. Um, that Donny Cates can can write yeah, they, for whoever he wants. They're not. Yeah, they don't have exclusivity contracts to where they can only write with Marvel. They can only write with DC or, or do artwork for DC. Or they're they're more freelance than than they've ever been in the past. I mean, before I, I think what McFarlane was drawing for DC and then he went into Marvel and then, you know, then he went into the image, but at the same time, um, back then you had to build into a certain character. Then you hop to a different title. Then you went to a different title. Now they got everybody doing everything on, as far as different covers, as far as different, uh, you can have an artist come in do nothing but a cover for a certain run. And then that's it. You don't see them again. On, on that pilot. And that reminds me, Rob. I know. Are, are, are we going to do a Deathmate show? Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we'll do one. Yeah, we're gonna do one for sure. But I guess what I guess what 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 was presented to uh, Todd McFarlane was. I mean, I mean, obviously he's old school. And then there was somebody that. I, uh, uh, which one was it? Somebody had mentioned that Richard said that you know the way that they do the writing comics is not the same anymore they do the artwork and then they start writing into the comic i just think that the 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 mode of you're in the stables of this company and you do that company and you're at the mercy of that company you know what i mean and that's the work you do when he's been able to see these other artists that he's worked with and then and then 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 people within the image you know uh house He's seen that they're able to go into Marvel, that they're able to to do image. Some go to DC, and they're probably just somebody told him, "It's like, hey, dude, you know what? You could do this easily, and bring all these people that are household names." Because I saw a lot of Batman people in the list. When you see this list of of, of artists, it's like he found all these Batman dudes, and he found all these guys that are like doing. Uh, uh, high caliber books. I mean, within image uh, DC and it, you know what? It honestly looked like he attracted a lot of DC people. And I think because they had, they cut all those books, they're not going to make as many books. He basically said, you know what? I can put all these guys to work and we can make a lot of money from spawn and all their, uh, I mean, imprints. keep in mind, he, he, he also has an affinity towards Batman. He did Batman books himself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Capullo also does Batman and they have that in common um, from back in the day. Um, you know, and, um, and McFarlane took Batman and Spider-Man and made Spawn. Well, so. he, he also made uh, partially uh, Venom. He's co-creator of Venom. Yep, and look at all, and look at look at all the different Venom imprints. You got Carnage, you got Scream, you got, you name it. There's some kind of you know Venom thing that's there, and you know w- he has one book. We I think we talked about that. It's so crazy that he has one book, and then he juggles maybe three or four covers. And I think you know after after he got to that mark, it's like, you know we need to create our own thing. Why am I making, I mean, he's going to still make these DC toys, but it's like, if people are going to make, have these really nice, you know, uh, you know, Kickstarter spawn figures, you know, why not have a whole shipment of brand new things, the scorch line and, you know, the gunslinger line. And I mean, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like, uh, he's leaving a lot of money on the table because if he makes that it, movie, it, he can easily make these, other movies as well if it's a success it's hard to it's hard to find that that line for me of you know is it i mean i mean he's pretty much pointed out i mean it's not for the love of the comic i mean it's he's Gosh, doing God. it for the money yeah <laughs> if if you were uh sleeping under a log you might have missed this trailer that went out Woo. And what was that trailer? Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Mortal mm. Kombat has come back. Shot and... for shot remake of the original. 
that we watched at the movies. Yes. That started as a video game and then a song and then the song became a movie. And, and that's, that, that song is still in this movie. Yep. I love that. That was cool. Yeah. Mortal Kombat. But I'll tell you this, to see Jax get his arms ripped off <laughs> dude, I was out of control. I'm going to tell you that right now. That trailer, it just, it went like one step. It was, you know. I, I think I like Kano even more. When he was like... Yeah, that was, that was, that was something. Um it 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 uh okay well okay uh, uh let's go ahead and, and uh Roland says uh shot by shot what what did you, Carlos did you see this trailer? Seen screenshots of it, but oh. he played the game once. This will be this will be his yeah. his fifth element. His fifth element. Uh, I can't believe you didn't watch it, Carlos. It's free anyway. Um, <laughs> The, I'll uh, watch it right now. Yeah, watch it. Go ahead. Yes. Flip it on You'll get my live video. reaction of it. Oh, I, I'm, I'm afraid reaction if I, video. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid if I put it on here, it'll be like last time. And I'll, I'll that it was so weird. I, 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 the image, I think it was an image that we had in the background and it detected and it was like, this cannot be put on YouTube or whatever. And I had to take that thing off. So it was kind of weird. I had to re-edit the show again before I put it on there. But I was gonna I was actually gonna show the trailer, but you know what? It doesn't matter because if I do, it's gonna get blanked out. Uh whatever. So Rich, you saw the trailer. What'd you what'd you think of the trailer of Mortal Kombat? I, I liked it. I liked the uh the the special effects looked real. I mean, you know, as opposed to as real as you can make them with a guy shooting ice. Uh, out of his hands and you know the uh, Sub Zero's he, character. I mean, he he played well on the screen as well as uh, Scorpion and and you know when you see a guy holding a freaking heart that's still beating in his hand. You, you know. know, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the the video games themselves became more cinematic as they were going along in the production of the way mm-hmm. Adam, uh, the you know the way that they film all that stuff. So it was eventually, eventually they were going to, it, it seemed that they were going to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? That it was, it was getting to the point where it just looked, you know, why aren't they making a movie out of this thing? I guess they had to find the right writer to put all this together. And did they really, did they really, <laughs> exactly. Did they really, exactly. But I guess you want, you want it to, you know, you don't want it to be just all cheese. I mean, you wanted to at least make it seem like there were, you know, stringing something okay, together. So, so let's just so go ahead and get the script you, again and just, just do it again. Okay, so so your take on it. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? What? Uh, this is Street a, Fighter, Mortal Kombat. This is a whole wait, different wait. ballpark, dude. No. I'm just... okay. So what do you think, I Carlos? Mean, yeah, I'm watching it right now. I'm, yeah, I'm looking at your reaction. Okay, well, reaction it, man. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for his hair to go. Ah! I am some zero. Okay, I dug when they were like saying their names and, and then they get into the fatalities, you know, finish him. And all of a sudden, dude, it was like, dude, but I wanted, I want to see the Johnny Cage. That's. What do you okay? Okay, what do you think of this Johnny Cage? Is Johnny Cage in there? I don't know. Who's the guy that's all running around? It's a stupid thing. Is that that's not Johnny Cage? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Because Johnny Cage always wears um, he wears shades. All the time. He's, a, he's an actor. Well, well who's like the dude? Well, who's the guy in the beginning? A new a new guy? Probably someone a new guy. That's Lou Diamond. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lou Diamond Kang. Right. So there is no Johnny Cage in this. I don't think so. He has to be because he was the original. He was in the original game. The game was based on him. Carlos, don't tell us <laughs> who was in the original game. That game came out when you were born. Let's I go think. ahead. Go to and this thing comes out on HBO Max, right? This month we were at we were at Air's Bowling Lane playing and watching this. Watching everybody pick Sub Zero and going, I'm not gonna play. That guy's just cheating with his. Yeah, that was Sub Zero's. In my other life. Okay, that that guy, that guy was the bartender at the bowling alley. 
He had a lot of time. To, no, really, he was. I know. He that's was. why I'm laughing. Okay. What's the name of the movie? I, I just Mortal Kombat? It. Or is it, what is it? No, it's just Mortal Kombat. Yeah. You have to say it like that, though. Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Okay. Mortal. Michael Kors. But yes. Michael Kors. How they, how they were able to, you know, stylize the Wait Mortal a minute. Kombat when song? the hell is this movie supposed to come out? I'm, I'm seeing. April. April of what? This is saying 14th. 22. Okay, okay, okay. April so it's, not, it's just Here. around the corner. Just around the corner. Yes. Okay, just so in the cast, the in the cast we have Kano. What? Oh, let me just go ahead and put it on the screen because they're all like, yeah, like. No, you have to say it like the song. Because it was from the it was from the the game. Kano, Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, Sub Zero. Okay. Wait a minute. She comes out in it. Who? Oh, don't look know, Bernadette. Oh. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say. So we got Josh Lawson. Nobody cares about the real names. Let's see. Sonia. Uh, Scorpion. Scorpion. Oh, he's got a name now, though. Well, yeah, yeah they've always he's had always had a name. name. <laughs> anyway, uh, Sub Zero, Raiden, uh, Jax, uh, Luke, Luke Kang. So Cole Young is not Luke Kang, like. Who's this? That's the guy with the tattoo. Right. So who's that guy? Is he going to change his name at the end to Johnny Cage? Stupid. <laughs> it's a Hollywood name. I mean, they got everybody in here, dude. I mean, how but, is it? But the cool thing is, it looks like they have. Ah, that... look down here. Allison Young, Emily Young, and Cole Young. It's the family affair. Yeah, the Shazam family. They were all probably orphans. They orphaned. And look at this. This one doesn't have a name. Mel Jarnson. So she doesn't get paid for the movie. You haven't seen it. Um, I like it. Carlos, you saw it. So what is your opinion? You just first what time. Your reaction? First time. And because you, you like your video game, dude. I mean, what did you think? I like it. It was. It was pretty cool to see. Finally, I see. Uh, a video game go on to like the big screen or I guess into a movie because you know we don't have uh theater that much but whatever. it's never happened but, before right yeah it's never happened because or when it when it does happen it, it sucks most of the time uh -oh. besides what? Sonic that was actually pretty good okay but, so um, he didn't he, he liked Sonic but he didn't like Street Fighter he probably never oh, saw Julia that. man Raul Julia wait a minute have have you seen the original Mortal Kombat movie and what do you think of that one? Well, it's been years since I last seen it. That's why, like, a Mills. School. And there's there's two of them. Do you think they'll get gravity kills? Anyway, and I'm wait. Is it saying goodbye or guilty? <laughs> it, that's guilty uh, any of the to... Is it guilty no. song or is it goodbye? I don't know. They both sound the same. <laughs> they both have G's in it. Do you, think, hey, hey, hey. do you think we'll have any of uh, uh, a rock and roll soundtrack or will it be a hip hop soundtrack or will it be no. a uh, what kind of soundtrack do you think we're going to have here? There's There has Country. to be a side soundtrack. Country. country. I, just want to well, I didn't say which. Soundtrack. I didn't say which country. I didn't say which. Country. Oh, OK. It'll be. A, yeah. Tomb Witcher Raider. wasn't. Witcher. Yes. On that <laughs> I Here's a Witcher was based off a book and then it became a video game. Eee, wow. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Ah. Splitting hairs. Splitting ah. hairs. It's very deep cuts. Anyway, I think this looks really cool. I really yes. got the vibe. I thought that it had a lot of the spirit of what people remember of the first movie, but Every all the the new generations leading up to that are for very from you know into the new game. I think you get that vibe, a, a, you know, a lot. You're getting the the gore that I think, and this is funny because when we saw the movie, we really liked what was going on, you know, with the this early CGI uh, effects and stuff like that at the time that seemed very archaic. If you watch it now, and me and Elvis saw the two movies, and oh, brother. <laughs> They're fun. They're fun to watch, you know, kind of hokey and, and stuff like that. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I think it's great to see this 
you know what? It would be cool. I'm wondering if they're the same length of time to actually watch the Mortal Kombat first trailer and then watch this the second trailer. And but just... I wonder if somebody would edit it together. See, I remember when we watched Mortal Kombat because we had seen Street Fighter. Like, it was so awesome. Again, at the time, it, you, we didn't... You don't have what you have now in, in in special effects and everything, but I remember listening to that soundtrack and watching that movie and thinking, and again, it, it was mainly the comparison game because of Street Fighter, but it was like awesome. And then Robin Shaw went on to do great things like <clears throat> Beverly Hills Ninja. Combat begins. Ah, uh, you know. Watching that, I want to watch it again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness, I didn't. I didn't think I was going to get all jazzed up watching that uh, thing again. It was, and what was it? It was when they started saying the names. Yep. Kano. Yeah, it's, it's, right there, you hear Kano right there. It's like Ugh. it's it's. I don't know what it is about that 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 song. You know what I'm saying? It's it 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 fits perfect with what they've been. Uh, I don't know because the song came out and the, we were all playing the game. You know what I mean? And we would all play the sound of the stupid song over and over and over. <laughs> it was all stupid. It's like, sure, yeah, test let's it. your might. The, the music, yeah, you will test your might. And the, <laughs> it was it. You know why? It reminded us. There you go. Uh, can't wait. It's a. It's it's a, what two months away. That's just. Yeah, I'm gonna go watch Mortal Kombat one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, they may. I mean, because. I mean the, the outfits, the the, the uniform. You know, that's the way, uh, Sub Zero and Scorpion looked back then. It wasn't all. And they're not. They're not. It, obviously, they're not a team. They're they're showing that where they're against each other or whatever. Uh, Sub Zero. Oh, no, no, no. Is that what's happening here? What What are we looking no, at? Well, the only reason that remember they were under the control of um, Shang Tsung in that movie. Right. So they weren't. They were enemies. I think they even said that in the movie. They were. They were arch actually, enemies type dudes. But because of yeah, and no. and I have to tell uh, the guy who played Shang Tsung in the first one. They changed the character in the game to pretty much look like him because he became Shang Tsung. I mean, yep. he's been in so many great movies. Okay, so I guess it's safe to say that we're all in agreement. It looks pretty, pretty good, all that good stuff. Yes. All right. So, all right, let's. We'll be quick about this. Uh, opinions. Justice League trailer came out last week, uh, um, and. Uh, we all live in a society. So, <laughs> opinions. Did it change your opinion of, of when you saw what you saw before for Justice League? It comes out, what, next month, right? I like it. That's one for like. I think <laughs> it, it's literally like nothing. It's literally nothing that, like, it's like a completely different movie. It's. Literally, like nothing like that. Why from the first one? Uh, yeah, it's just completely different. <laughs> so, guys, you you mean it, it's a retake of? Um, let me get this right now. After yeah. he heard all the feedback from everybody, see this is yeah. this is exactly like I was saying before. How you know why? You know they're gonna re redo Ishtar. <laughs> we know what went wrong. Well, so I mean that's what. It, that's why you got Star Wars. I mean, there were there were too many cooks in the kitchen, so to speak, that saw that film and they or maybe one big honcho that saw that film and wanted it to do a different way. And see, because easily you could say the same thing about what was happening to Solo before Ron Howard was brought into the film. And then you could say what was happening to Rogue One, because there was all kinds of footage. And I remember being in the theater going what the hell are we watching? Where did all that other footage go? Cause it was like, it became a completely different, you know, I kept waiting to see those scenes and a lot of people not, walked out of that theater feelings cheated that 
but not every not every uh, production puts the scenes that people liked from the preview into the movie. The first uh, one that made a big deal about it was Robin Hood, the arrow scene uh, that they had in the preview. That wasn't even in the movie. They ended up putting it in the movie because everybody liked it so much in the preview. Um, I mean, or Deadpool, Deadpool two. Whenever they filmed all that stuff to throw people off, that the whole team was going to die. Well, we still haven't seen the opening. What was that? Was that bit of honey? What was it the peanut butter can? What is it? Oh, Snickers. Anyway, I'm so talking we, about the shot where you see the TIE fighter coming up and what's her name's face to face with that. When you see that in the trailer, you're like, holy shit, what is she going to do? How is she going to escape from that? Well, we just don't put it in the movie. <laughs> we don't have to explain that at all. Well, I mean, in a way, it's going to be like being able to watch the movie for the first time again. Um, I've done that to a movie before and, uh, and it was dumb and dumber. The -hmm. version I saw is nothing compared to the version everybody else in the world saw. Um, mine was a rough cut of the movie. Um, the movie wasn't finished yet. Uh, there were scenes that weren't color corrected. The soundtrack was completely different when I saw it. There were a bunch of different scenes in the movie that the never Star made it. You know? was in that. So it's it's just, you know, it, it's going to be like like that, well, you know. When you watch the trailer of Dumb well, and Dumber, there's scenes in there that are not in the movie. And then I mean, I, and they then were you, in the one I saw. Right, right. You remember the but, end credits of Short Circuit? Do you not remember the, the credits of Short Circuit? What now, there was all these shots oh, yeah, that yeah, weren't yeah, in yeah. the movie. Right. Well, um, you know what? If they, if they still made the um, if they still made TV versions, that's probably where all those clips were going to go. Yeah, it's just like when you watch Ace Ventura on FX, they added like the when he goes into the that he actually goes up on stage and starts singing with that death metal. That's why he gets thrown in the mosh pit, and that's why there's that one scene where you see him get thrown off, and he's like. Right, but anyway, uh, and I know the soundtrack changed also when it when you saw it in the theatrical version of Dumb and Dumber, and then when you actually see it released, well, I mean, certain songs that didn't they they couldn't they didn't have the rights to or whatever, and they end up changing those songs. Well, j- just like how Richard saw that different co- uh, thing, there's people who watched. We're ink blot seven. Yeah. Um, there's people who watched uh, Pretty in Pink where Ducky just ended up without Chrissy Swanson. So, I mean, there, there, there's always going to be, you know, that that's why they change the endings of, of movies because people don't like the, the unhappy ending or the happy ending, sure. you know. Dante dies in one of them. Yeah. Right. The original, but anyway, yeah, the original cut. I'm going to give it a chance. I want to see uh, more oh, yeah. Ben Affleck, man. No, totally. They totally. Totally. And they're agree. going to replace Cyborg with the Wonder Twins. No, probably not. But uh, no, I'm definitely down to see it. I think uh, I want to see how all those pieces come together. Obviously, this is going to set up possibly other movies that have already been kind of been thrown around already. Uh, uh, I hear they might be making a flash movie. Yes. Yes. Uh, We have the uh, multiple Batman's and multiple. Yeah. We got Batman. We got Superman all of a sudden, or we don't know if they're movies, but they're being announced that these guys are going to appear in three somethings. So we're all down to see it Uh, comes out next month. And uh, I'm going to give it a shot too. I think it'd be great to check out. All right. Uh, WandaVision theories. I'm just going to go around the thing. We, we, we've we all seen it. The episode comes out in a, in a couple of hours, a new one. What you've seen so far, 
uh, and now we got to see this uh, crazy episode where uh, they're dressed up in their their old uh, their old outfits or whatever the the I, I I I dig I dig everything about this episode. From this point on, uh, let's start with Rich. Where do you think we go from here? I mean, you could just you know, you know, it could be a quick little thing. Where do where do you, where where does this where does this go for what what is what you're seeing set up right now? Where do you think it's going? Well, shoot. Um... I, I think I think it's gonna tear the universe. I think it's gonna split something and, and that's when people are gonna start falling through and people are gonna show up that weren't supposed to be there and I mean she made it grow pretty quick. Um I, I think she's gonna lose some control even though she's not the one in control. Um and and this is I, I wanna say the next three episodes people are gonna start showing up alternate universe people not created ones that she's made just alternate universe people they're going to start slipping in somehow yep uh roland what do you what are you thinking where do you, where where are we where are we headed in wandavision um we're going to see that she's being manipulated um i think hayward is not who he seems uh we talked about this before uh, they don't call Wanda Scarlet Witch, just like I don't think they're going to call Hayward Mephisto. Um, I think, like Richard's saying, yeah, hopefully we're going to start seeing uh, we're going to start seeing people uh, disappear. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, one thing I, I, I thought um, I, R- Rob and I were talking about this, um, the Funko Pop, where it has quote you know quotations around uh pietro maximoff um my theory on that is that it's his halloween costume so he's playing as that quicksilver that pietro maximoff not himself um so i think that theory that 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 shows that it's it's a fake um i think it's an alternate reality uh because to me, when she saw him dead, it would have been the other guy because she saw Vision dead, and it was his Vision. death, and and it was, um, it was. But that was weird too because he was still wearing his costume, but he was had the bullet holes. So I mean, it, there's so much that that's going to happen here. You already see that um, uh, Monica Rambo is uh, changing on the molecular level. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so she's gonna become. I thought it was funny that her mom's uh, call sign was Photon, which you know. So maybe that's why she takes that name to honor her mom. But I mean, it's it's gonna be wild hour long episodes here on out. Um, it's gonna be awesome. I, uh, I'm, I'm P- excited. Pietro Pietro did explain that the reason he's the mm-hmm. way he is is because she couldn't He's guessing. Stand to see him in pain you know and that that's what he said so that's why he figures he's in a different uh, appearance i think what was uh what was kind of intriguing was how the kids were able to make themselves age she wasn't trying to make them age they did it they on, did the, it. on no, their the, own the, the babysitter was doing it You think Agnes did it? Yeah, she sprayed them with the lilac stuff, and then all of a sudden they aged their first progression. And then anytime she's been around, they've kind of aged with her well, being the there. One time that when she said that they can't have something at a certain age, she's like, "Don't you dare get older!" And they didn't. So yeah, I don't yeah. know. There's a lot of theories. Well, well, we still need to find out who the engineer is, and I think that's going to be another uh, surprise. I, I'm truly expecting within the next three issues or episodes, we should see something in regards to. I'm hoping the Fantastic Four universe, either in character uh, or a person that maybe, and it, we've we've talked about this too, that has not become who they are to become. The fact that we're cool. dealing with scientists and stuff like this. It'll be Peter B. Parker. 
who knows? We, we don't know. I mean, it would be very interesting to, you know, we're, we're talking about somebody that, you know, we don't know where they're, where they're at. And if it ends up being somebody like that, then we are in that realm where we are playing with different, uh, if it is like a, a Peter Parker or something, it goes to that thing that I said, you know, which Peter Parker did you feel was more sciencey? They all had a, something with science or whatever. Toby. Right. But, th- but that's what I'm saying. If it ends up being something like that, but an older version, that they, might be very interesting to see that come into play because then you start playing around with the universes a little bit. Even. They've, they've already, um, somebody already leaked that, that he was on the set. It, well, no, 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 that it was going to, that they were going to have a Mandalorian like reveal, like reveal but what with Luke, that it was going to be something like that that great do you yeah but i've also seen just recently somebody posting that it's not going to be reed richards so it, it's i know, could, it I doc, know. could it be doc ock is he was he an engineer I'm, I'm trying to think of bad guys that are engineers that way well, well, I, I, he was I a scientist because i think I'm, I, I'm thinking in terms of okay because you think of the spider verse remember in spider verse it was the girl that helped bring about that. I'm right back. That that thing, wasn't it? That the the, the, the open porthole didn't didn't that happen? Wasn't it the girl, uh, Octavia, whatever the 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 female Oct- Doc Oct person? Yeah, well, it was that. Could one, it be? Uh, remember, remember that one the, thing he had to try to go get. Right. Uh, so do you? That, do you I guess what I'm trying to say is vision. The actor said that he had always wanted to work with this individual. Now I'm starting to rethink what if it's Alfred Molina and they're going to bring Alfred Molina into the thing as a scientist to kind of like, Hey, can you explain what's kind of going on, which would bring a piece of the Spider-Man universe into play into this thing. Unless you get uh, uncle Ben's brother in. Peter's dad. You know what? I didn't think about that because he was, he was a scientist, right? He was yeah, a scientist. He, and he's the one that had all those connections. The well, under, he, he, the he, secret life, he, right? He, yeah, he was he was trying to develop um, that thing where they reincarnate the, the the body parts and everything because the guy wanted his arm back. Right, right, the lizard and, and uh, yeah. Hmm. See, now we're kind of dealing into something a little bit in a different realm here that we're, you know what I mean? And I still am going to hold out that maybe we we end up seeing Magneto in some kind of way. I I think it'd be kind of interesting to see if that comes into play. But I think that's what I'm kind of expecting. I'm I'm expecting to hopefully we see some kind of fantastic four element like a Reed Richards or, you know, he, he's the scientist guy. He's, he would be a, 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 a person that would link Venom, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. I mean, because Reed Richards is the guy that, uh, you know, he appears in all the books, the future, all the reads, rich, all the Richards, Reed Richards from all the different universes, like talk to each other. And he would be that, you know what I mean? Working with Doc, Doctor Strange and stuff like that, he would be one of those important characters well, that you need to have. He was in one there. of those. He was one of those that would have those monthly or every six month meetings with uh, the, these with diff- Iron Man and all these different guys, right? Um, Tony Stark and and see, we don't really, have a, and right now currently we don't have a Tony Stark, so it would make sense that we end up bringing somebody that is a, you know what I mean. He's dealing with all this kind of stuff. He does space. He does, you know, the inner multiple multiple dimensions. It would make sense that if she was to kind of reach out to somebody like that. So it'd be kind of interesting to see if we end up seeing a a Fantastic Four element. We see another X-Men and then we see, remember, we got three episodes. So it'd be interesting to see a Fantastic Four element, an X-Men element, another one. And then we end up having possibly a Spider-Man Hank McCoy. Well, we were actually, well, that, that could be very well too. I mean, I, you know, that would be an X-Men uh, engineer type guy and he's, he wouldn't be in blue form, right? He would be, well, shit, he might come out in blue form. Who knows? But uh, 
We started yeah. thinking about an Alfred Molina. So wait, yeah, I know. I was listening. Yeah, yeah. No. So I think it'd be kind so of wait a minute. Well then, well then, who would it be? Would it be? Would it be Frazier coming out? <laughs> or would it be the younger version? It'd be the younger version because yeah, he's had, the one who's. We've established him pretty much uh, in all the uh, on most of them. Any Dark Phoenix movie they try to erase. So. <laughs> Well, I don't know. So I'm thinking that in these next three episodes, those are those are three things that I'm thinking you would want to see Disney set, you know, connections to. We 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 definitely show X Men from the Fox. Then, if we were to see, dude, I mean, what, what if it's Doctor Doom? He was a scientist too. Yeah, yeah, that's what a lot of people have said too. What if we're what if we end up? Well, we don't even. I mean, do they play him up as uh, uh, Victor Von Doom or whatever his name is, or or is it just end up getting a different cat and putting a helmet on him and calling him Doctor Doom? Do you think that's f- so far out that they would do this, something like that? No, they wouldn't. They, that All would right. that would be a, like they'd, a, a wave ripple the across the universe. And <laughs> they'd, they'd get the same actor. Hmm. Then, or, or Kevin Bacon. Oh shit. Hey, he, uh, he had he had Magneto's helmet before Magneto had it. Hmm. Oh, he was uh yeah, he was Shaw, wasn't he? Or... Mm-hmm. Yep. It's it's it any it, it's anything, you know, everybody's wanted to work with Kevin Bacon. I keep we keep thinking about that guy. He keeps saying I've always wanted to work with this individual. So so it'd be interesting to find out. So that's our that's that's our, our quick take on the one division uh, theories. Okay, I'm gonna rapid fire. Let's let's see if we can. Uh, we're still in the first of the minute news, and we're like two hours later. <laughs> it's a long minute. Yeah. Uh, okay. Here we go. Uh, Last Ronin number two is finally gonna come out. This is the biggest book IDW Publishing has released. How many? A hundred and thirty thousand copies. Does that number sound familiar? That is the original order count of Last Ronin number one, and it, they printed below that. So if they would have waited and took all the orders like they were, the first book would have been the all-time record breaker, not number two. Mm-hmm. So but they wouldn't have had three and four printings. And so Right. So let me, well, let me ask you this. Now that that book's going to have 130,000 copies – and they've already announced that there is already the second print going to come out of that one. So there's going to be even more copies. Where, where do you find this book heading? I, I think do you, do you find the book kind of like going down in price because of all the covers that they have, or where do you see this kind of settling? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's becoming I, a I, lot of issues. I think it becomes, uh, uh, I guess, depending on the storyline on this second issue, I think it's going to determine where it's going to go. It could end up going into the four for a dollar bin. If, if the storyline doesn't hit it right. But again, this is a mini series. So, I mean, it's, I think because of this short run, this short little special event with uh, the creators, I think, um, I think it's still going to hold. It's got to have enough action. It's going to have to have enough action. And I mean, the first one was was building and building and building, you know. And well, now they have to. Well, they did. The they did mention that somebody was going to come out. And then what was the name? Remember, Rich? I mentioned the name of that character. Um, what was it? Baxter Stockman? No? Yes, they mentioned his name, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, well, yeah. And, and like I like I was saying before, that girl who was following Michelangelo is like they kept calling her Jones. So that's April's daughter, April right. and Casey's daughter. So that's going to be, you know, we, we build upon these elements and then we drop in some other, you know, characters we might have not seen or and if I remember see their later selves. If I remember Baxter actually turned good, I thought. No, he did. In the comic, he, right. he turned good. So, yeah. So I guess I'm just saying there's just a lot of a lot of books. You know what I mean? As far as price, pricing points and all this kind of stuff, it's going to be a big, it's already, I mean, the book hasn't even come out and it's already, you know, a big seller. Everybody's been anticipating this book. Dude, how, I mean, what has it been like two, two, three months 
since the uh, since that first book came out? Yeah, I was still. Yeah, because I it was like, yeah, because I was still at my in laws. Yeah, they're, they're gonna re- they're gonna release a book a quarter to get their numbers for the year. <laughs> Man, that, they, they're, I mean, yeah, they're gonna they're rake trying it to in. do the image. They're trying to do the image. <laughs> Death mate. Death mate. Hey, how 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 long did it take the Max to come out? That thing was delayed and delayed and delayed. Yeah, well, I don't think that's gonna happen with this unless you know something happens with the. The art crew. I mean, see, this is the, the crazy thing is because they already had started and then they fired the whole crew and then they ended up bringing some other guys to, to do the work. And, and I then can't the wait co- till they get the and then the, cut of that. And then the cover that they were originally promoting, they, they didn't even, they're not even using that cover at all that was in the little promotionals that, that were first uh, solicited. Now it's like some action cover and it looks cool. Don't get me wrong. I just, it, it's been a long time coming. Uh, are you oh, with are all you the variants? Be- yeah, I know. With all the variants, why didn't they release it? Yeah, I know. They, you never know. They probably will. Uh, so you, this will be on your list, Carlos. You're, you're picking up the turtles, the the new ones. Mm-hmm. It's going to be cool. There should be plenty of copies. Hopefully, you don't have to go through the whole hoopla that that happened last time. Uh, the other thing that I did see was, and this this is going to Ridge can actually uh, uh, shed some light on this. Uh, delays are starting to happen with King in Black. Because of the way the storyline and the books are being placed, they're saying, I think, book five is going to face, uh, 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 it's not going to be released on time. So everything got pushed back a couple of weeks. And they're, everybody's starting to cry Civil War. Because when you got one book that relies on another book, everything backs up and then it delays you know, the regular release of all these other books it's like a chain reaction how was your experience with that when when that started happening with uh civil war and civil war was all over the place i mean literally all okay. over the place. okay you do realize that with civil war and civil war two that we're talking about right right yeah. civil war two yeah. now you do realize that there's some books that never even came out right some titles never even made it out um they were slated to come out and poof they just disappeared um and, and it was either they disappeared or nobody ordered because they got delayed and delayed and delayed and nobody ordered the book. And there was part of the story missing. Uh, and it, 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 believe me, we, we were going off the checklist of every single book. We're talking mm-hmm. uh, almost a hundred and something dollars a week, making sure that these books were, were, you know, that the every yeah, issue you want, was done. Yeah, you want the whole story, yeah. you know, and, and some of them never made it. Uh, that Somebody happened to with Empire. Em- there was a thing, the Empire uh, uh, run. Uh, there was a, there was a, maybe I'm, I think I'm getting confused. The, there was, there was a series before we got into the X-Men. Uh, yeah. Empire. Run. Uh, yeah. Empire. Okay. There was a book that was a Thor book and everybody was waiting. And I was eagerly waiting for this Thor book to be, coming out it was part of that run and it just sat there on my list and it waited and it had an awesome cover this retro rainbow looking cover i'm wondering if you re- recall that one it was very rainbowy looking the cover and it never came out and they basically said oh the book just got canceled i was like wait a minute how do you have a series that everything is relying on this thing and then did just cancel the book. And so you don't even have that part of the story anymore. So well, it, it makes you think what they were asking uh, Donny Cates and Stegman, uh, Oh, is the King in black your final venom? No, no, it's going to be the 200. Well, are you sure? You know, because it, they kept saying is the King in black one going to be the very last one that y'all do. And they kept saying, no, it's going to be issue 200. You know, legacy issue 200, not the king in black. Right. And I think that's where some of the problem happened, because if we remember comic book, uh, what is it? Free comic book day or whatever it was. They kept announcing that virus was going to be it was a it was a first appearance. And they kept telling everybody on on uh, comic book, uh, whatever free comic book day, go get this book. It's going to be the first appearance of virus, the first appearance of virus. Virus pops up in Venom. And then pop. Here's the book, the free book came out at the stores and everybody was like, no, this book actually became the first appearance. And like it was promoted that this was the first book. 
but because of publishing it flipped everything around and it, and it ended up doing that. Uh, by the way, the 200 book did get delayed. So it was originally supposed to come out like in whatever it was supposed to come out in. It actually got delayed by at least uh, two or three weeks. So Venom 200 is actually not going to come out when it was originally going to come out. We should actually be careful of that. We've been calling it Venom 200. It's actually Venom 35, the 200th Venom because Roland tried to look for it with his uh, comic book store. And when they typed it up, only the poster was popping up. So you have to call it by its original run that it's currently on volume, whatever, four or five Venom 35, 200th issue or whatever you want to call it. So it's, yeah. So if you go looking for Venom 200, not going to find it. You're going to find the poster. You have to ask for Venom uh, 35. We're going to we're going to go ahead and rapid fire through our usually the last part of our show. And it's a comic book Wednesday. We're going to go ahead and talk about some of the hot books that are coming out next this coming up week, uh, February 24th, 2001, uh, 2021. Holy crap. I, I lost 20 years there mm-hmm. in, in one second. Uh, so much younger. Yeah, there. <laughs> uh there were there were actually uh, quite a quite a bit of books. Uh, if you look in the previews, which is what we always refer to, there are always uh, books that that are that always catch our attention, and they're books that we've seen before, and we've been kind of anticipating their their release. But I wanted to go ahead and show a couple of those uh, books as they are right now. Uh, this is one that is coming out. It's a Kubert uh, cover. It is Wolverine number ten. It's a variant edition. And if you notice, he is with Maverick. So uh, this one looks uh, pretty heavy duty. The other cover, it's okay, cover A, but this one is just totally, totally awesome. Uh, de- definitely, Rich. Uh, it's been so weird with the comic book stores. Everything's coming out late and stuff like that. But obviously, he's holding up Maverick right next to him, and then uh, they're running through the, uh, I guess, the streets. Uh, I think it's Japan because I'm looking at the symbols and stuff like that. So uh, I think. What's I think, with his shoulder? This guy? No, top right, that one. Well, he's got the hand. He's holding. He's holding like that. Oh, that's his hand. It looks yeah. like a little person. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does kind of look like a little person. It's like Gambit. <laughs> uh this is the adam kubert version uh just like the bad old days wolverine gets into a jam with his old team x compatriot maverick but the reunion won't last long if they can't break free of the legacy house uh that one's coming out february 24th 2021 from marvel comics this one definitely the cover alone is just one of those uh pretty pretty wicked uh covers i think the next book Y'all can see that one, right? Yep. Department of Truth. This is an image book. We're at number six. This one plays upon the conspiracy theories uh, through time uh, and 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 all that kind of stuff. This cover is uh, is a, a throwback of 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 all sorts, and I really like the the imagery. The other one has some kind of wizard looking dude on the on the cover. This is more of a like a cathedral kind of uh, setting. And this is the lady in red that will pop up and usually all the variant covers and stuff like that. Um, uh, Department of uh, Department of Truth to uncover the deep tangled roots of the Department of Truth roots that stretch far back into the Middle Ages. What is the Inquisition? Who are the Illuminati? And what is the truth behind the Phantom of Time hypothesis? Uh, Department of Truth number six. This is cover B. And this one also comes out February 24th. Uh, issue one and two, you end up dealing with a lot of the JFK uh, conspiracies and all this kind of stuff. Every All these books kind of follow, you know, with various uh, conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Uh, so um, the writer is from Batman. Uh, uh, he, so, you know, if, if you're a Batman fan and stuff like that, you've a lot of people have been enjoying uh, this uh, uh, 
this book, I, I've, I've, I've read only, you know, to be honest, I've only read the first two and I really liked what it, where it was going. I haven't had a chance to, to catch up on it with issue six. It kind of gives me a reason to go back and, and, and try to catch up with what they've established on this particular book, but from image comics, department of truth, number six, you definitely want to pick that one up. The next one, obviously you got Capullo and McFarlane, uh, joining again with what has been announced you have to take a careful look at all the covers because all the, don't get me wrong some of those other covers are establishing some of these characters that are going to end up having their own books and <clears throat> i think they're <clears throat> purposely now being introduced in that manner so each book is going to feature you know either pure spawn or across the new guys or whatever the case may be like the new books leading up into their own series uh the chain gang part two a new team the chain gang but will they last she spawn gunslinger spawn medieval spawn and the reaper so you know what I mean? You're you're getting those early glimpses of what these teams and what they're going to reform and recall themselves. I think the Redeemer, I don't know if he is one of those covers as well. And that's going to be the first time that we've ever seen that character. And he's actually part of the Scorched. So there you go. That's going to be his first cover. So that I think is the third or fourth cover in this, in this batch of, of covers that's out there. So from uh, Todd McFarlane, Spawn 315. I think the Capullo McFarlane cover and the Redeemer cover are uh, some covers you can go with on this one. Uh, Phantom Killer, Phantom Star Killer. I remember I first showed uh, issue one like many moons ago, and now there's there's still, you know, this is the third printing cover. This is a, a variant. It doesn't look like the other, the other uh, setup. But this is the third uh, print. So if you've missed print one and print two, um, you know, this is uh, one way to get into this book. Um, they haven't announced if they're going to have any other, you know, offshoots or books. They have action figures. They have all this kind of stuff. But this book will be in its third printing. And it is a great way. Check your local comic book stores. Call them up. Find out if they're going to get that. Or special order it from Scout Comics. They do have a lot of these books that you can actually order directly from them. Uh, we're, we're nearing the top books that I think are going to be... Uh, might, they might be harder to get. But you know I think these are going to be definitely must picks. We got Crossover 4. This one shouldn't be that hard of a pick. But because of what they're doing in the top secret cover. Which will be revealed on the 24th. So... The fact that it says that any time from now till the 24th, spoilers might pop out. So if you don't want to know what's going to appear behind this cover until the 24th and it is in your comic book shop, then wait. Get off the internet. Don't go to a comic book page because I can guarantee you that that cover will sneak out and it's going to be revealed. And I don't know. Do you think it's going to be a major shock to the comic book world rich or do you think it's just going to be oh okay it's just another dude or whatever it's it's hard to say i mean with the way they've been going with it um i think they're trying to get a shocker in there but at the same time it would be disappointing if it was underwhelming right it like it yeah it under under it it, it doesn't play out as big as they're hyping it up to be yeah, that would be a big disappointment. Right. Well, I am predicting that on Sunday, somebody's going to leak this cover. They're not going to be able to hold on to it. You're going to see somebody like take a picture somewhere and it's going to pop out. And, you know, I don't and know. We're going to see Beta Ray Bill and Storm. <laughs> thing. Yeah, you're going to see all these regular cats or who, whoever whoever's in that. But that's going to be the the big the big thing. We we will finally see who who ends up uh, coming out uh, in this. That, that, that top right hand corner could be throwing us all off. It could be, could be that mini frog. Oh, the frog. Yeah, Fro yeah, the frog Thor, frog throg, or whatever his name is. Yeah, I'm, I've been I've been looking to see. I don't know. Can't tell, man. There's all these little. 
you keep looking at the artwork and there's stuff that looks like lightning coming out from this. Look, it goes like this and there and right here and right here. It looks like lightning bolts. You know what I mean? Like something's happening. You know, it's, it's like pulling him in or he's pulling something out or he's, I don't know. We'll find out. But there it is. Crossover four. This is the all red cover with Madman and Mad Madman picks up Thor's hammer. <laughs> That's the secret. He's actually picking up the hammer. Yep. And everybody's all in shock. Well, you never know. I mean, <laughs> and this is another one that I'm going to go with. It's called by the horns. And it's funny because you actually, you shared the, the unicorns cover, didn't you? You shared the unicorn, that unicorn cover on the, it was a unicorn book, yeah. right? It was a clouds. Yeah. Well, look at this book right here. I'm wondering if it ties into it, but this is actually, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and read it or just, I'll kind of skim it over by the horns. Number one, it's one of six. Uh, this, uh, this character hates unicorns uh, for nearly a year. She's dedicated her life to tracking down and killing them all for trampling her husband uh, now exiled from her farming village. Uh, she, uh, for her selfish, selfish, uh, selfishly neglecting her duties. Uh, uh, she's on the search uh, uh, through the continents for the clues to the whereabouts of the unicorns. See, I don't know if it does directly tie into it, but I got a feeling it may. So this is basically, she's got a, obviously she's all bloodied and she's got, you know, she's sitting on all these magical creatures and she has a unicorn horn in her hand. So she's a unicorn hunter. So I don't know. I, I also, I thought the unicorns book actually looked pretty cool too. So I'm, I'm really thinking uh, you definitely dive into this book. I, I really think that this is going to be really cool uh, from scout comics by the horns, number one, you know, once we get it on, in our hands, we'll be able to dive deeper into this thing and, re and really know where we're going with this particular book. I, I think it's going to, it's going to be really cool. Uh, six, six parts. Um, this should take us through at least what before the end of the year. And then we'll see where, where that ends up going. But yeah, by the horns from scout comics, one of six cover a, there's another one, Aftershock, Nuclear Family. I've actually seen some other covers that actually look like they're being radiated and, and all that kind of stuff. I, I really I really think this is uh, going to be a fun, fun in a weird kind of uh, uh, way. This is Aftershock, number one, uh, you know, right off the bat, you know, America, 1957, Elvis dominates the airwaves, apple pie is served at every meal, but a dark cloud of nuclear holocaust looming Korean War vet Tim McLean major uh, concern is taking care of his family in the atomic age. You know, it says here it's based on Philip K. Dick's short story, Breakfast at Twilight. Um, it is written by uh, Stephanie Phillips and illustrated by Tony Shastin. Um, it is Cold War era science fiction at its most timely and terrifying. Uh, I think it's going to be cool. Um, I like all that kind of uh, apple pie nostalgia kind of thing. It, it, it doesn't really give if it's a mini series or not, but it, it is cover. It is number one cover a, and um, I have seen some other variants and I don't know if they're store variants or not, but uh, definitely aftershock scout vault, you know, all these, all these company behemoth have all been churning out, you know, all this kind of really cool, cool books and, and, uh, uh, stuff like that. I mean, obviously very different from like superhero, you know what I mean? It's very, you know, uh, science fiction and, 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 uh, all that kind of good stuff. And of course we've been waiting for this one, paranormal hitmen. It is the, um, pun the Sp amazing Spider-Man Punisher, uh, uh, homage. Um, uh, this is one I, I really think that would be really cool to get a hold of, uh, Rich, if you hadn't already put it on your list or anything like that. But uh, there is one store in town that does uh, carry uh, a lot of behemoth. 
uh, Paranormal Hitman, number one of four. It is cover B, and it is homage, of course, to The Amazing Spider-Man 129. And there it is, Paranormal Hitman. And those are the books that I've kind of uh, have been keen to to pick up and I think that these are some books that you guys need to put on your list. So for uh Comic Book Wednesday, February 24th, 2021, uh let's let's just do a quick review of some of those books. There was Wolverine number 10, the Kubert uh variation. There was uh Department of Truth number 6 cover B set in the middle ages. You got Spawn number 315 cover B, the Capullo McFarlane uh cover. Then you got third printing of Phantom Star Killer number one. You got crossover number four, cover B, the all red uh, top secret reveal will finally be revealed on that variant. Then you got By the Horns number one, number two, Nuclear Family number one, and the one that we've been uh, waiting for from Behemoth Comics, Paranormal Hitman number one of four, cover B, the Amazing Spider Man uh, homage cover to the, uh, I guess you would say the first uh, appearance of Punisher. But anyway, uh, those are the must pickups for Comic Book Wednesday. Yeah, and and there there are some delays. A lot of the comic book stores we heard are experiencing delays. So if they hadn't received their books when they normally would have received them, they're definitely going to be off by like maybe a day or two. So a lot of people have been waiting for their DC books and their uh, Diamond stuff, which is their Marvel and stuff like that. So guess what? This weekend, actually Friday and Saturday, you're going to probably be seeing all these books. Not these particular books, but books that were coming out this past week that, you know, you do, you definitely don't want to miss those books. So uh, definitely hit up your comic book stores. It's been a really uh, tough time. So uh, kind of pay a visit, check out what they have. Uh, a lot of specials are going on too. Uh, a lot of stores right now. Uh, so that's, that's what we have for comic book Wednesday. I actually wanted to let everybody in on something. This just got announced tonight, uh, February 18th. Well, it's now the 19th, but February 18th, a Kickstarter got uh, launched, and I wanted to uh, give everybody a heads up on this one. So let me go ahead and share the screen real quick, and I, we're going to share it on our on our on our page. Uh, but it's this right here: uh, Beowulf issue number one, the story of a thirteen-year-old girl, her cat, a millennial slacker, and a ten-ton dragon. I mean, if that is if that's not enough to, uh, to, to get you, I, I, I don't know what is. It just started. There's 27 days to go on this Kickstarter. It already has 27 backers. It's already raised $746. They, their pledge is they want to hit $1,500. They are halfway there. So uh, rip comic book fans, comic book fans, independent uh, artists and stuff like that. Anybody out there, uh, want to contribute uh, to this Kickstarter and get Beowulf issue number one uh, out flying. Uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna, we're going to share this and we're going to put it on our, our episode uh, details. So that way you can click it and um, uh, get everything going on this thing. So, and of course with uh, when, when you, when you submit, you know, a pledge, you, there's different things that you can get. You can get rewards. Uh, you can uh, you get a digital copy when you pledge four dollars or more. When you pledge seven, it looked like you get an actual print copy standard. For ten dollars, you get a print print copy deluxe, which is a you get a thank you. You get a stickers and you get a deluxe version of the comic book. Uh, special pinups and behind the scenes information are going to be in the book itself. Uh, for $19, you're going to get the retailer special. You get the deluxe comics. You get three, uh, I guess, three what? Three print comics. You get a poster, thanks, stickers, advertisement. It's a special deal for retailers. Buy in bulk and save, and you'll get a free poster and small ad. Oh, you get a small ad in the back of the comic book as well. So, hey, that sounds kind of like get a rip comic podcast thing there. Uh, pledge 50 or more, you get an art, artist sketch and a comic book. Uh, you get the deluxe copy and you get an art, artist sketch of Beowulf. 
Uh, this is a, a great way to support independent artists who are definitely uh, producing comic books, you know, in, in this fashion and stuff like that. And what a great way to get uh, Beowulf issue number one. Uh, like I said before, we will definitely share this on our uh, Rip Comic Podcast uh, Facebook page. And you'll be able to follow uh, more of the adventures. And uh, what a great way to go ahead and support, uh, you know, comic book artists and uh, their creations um, in this manner. So on that note, if anybody else out there is creating comic books and want to get the word out on their uh, Kickstarter or wherever they happen to be in, in the creation of their particular comic book reach out to us at rip comics podcast and we would definitely love to uh you know show everybody what you have and and share the love and and try to get get that support that uh, we all need to get to the next level so there you go beowulf issue number one so but uh that's all i have uh for today or tonight or tomorrow morning actually I want to thank everybody for uh, being part of the show. And if you have any questions, send them your way. Go send them through Facebook, send them through uh, Anchor, or go to YouTube and watch our shows. And you can send us questions through that way as well. Uh, we are part of the Without Your Head network of shows. Go to the Without Your Head network and uh, check out our show. It, give it a shot. They, they have videos. They have um, podcasts. And you can watch old, listen to old shows, new shows, and all the different kind of shows. So uh, for the Rip Comic Podcast, I want to thank everybody for listening to us tonight. And we will definitely catch you next week. So until next time, catch you later. Let's hear what Bingo City is saying. <laughs>